The dragon has been defeated, but at a terrible price, the price of Beowulf's life. This should cause the reader to ask why Beowulf attacks the dragon by himself. Why does he not take the others with him? Surely this would have given him a greater chance of success. We at first suspect some wrong-headed pagan machismo, especially when the poet says in line 2540 that the warrior trusted in his own strength entirely and went under the crag. Is this Beowulf failing at last to fight against uh, the seeds of pride that are welling in his, in his own heart? I think not. I think there are two far more admirable reasons for Beowulf's actions. First, Beowulf tells his men that he was always point man when Hyalak was king. This is the fighting position that Beowulf knows best. Perhaps it's the only position he knows. Second, we learn that Wiglif is an untried warrior. In line 2627, the poet tells us that this is his first time to be tested as a fighter. Yet Wiglif says that he and the others were specially selected because Beowulf considered us the best of his arm-bearing thanes. The cowardice of the other thanes indicates their inexperience in battle, and facing a dragon is far more terrifying than an army of men. Furthermore, with 50 years of peace, the Yates have not known much war, as Beowulf himself points out. No king of any neighboring clan would dare face me with troops. None had the power to intimidate me. This means that the Yates have no battle-hardened warriors. So why does Beowulf try to defeat the dragon alone? For the simple reason that he's trying to protect his novice thanes from an early death. Knowing that he is dying, Beowulf is consoled by remembering that he has ruled over his people well, giving them 50 years without war, an unheard of accomplishment in the Anglo-Saxon world. Beowulf has been the greatest of all kings, defeating every monster within and without for half a century. But even Beowulf cannot defeat the reality of time and death. Beowulf asks Wiglaf to bring out a sampling of the treasure so the king can see the bounty that he has won for his people in his final fight. My going will be easier, he says, for having seen the treasure, a less troubled letting go of the life and lordship I have long maintained. With his dying breath, Beowulf thanks God that he has been allowed to leave my people so well endowed on the day I die. He also instructs Wiglaf to construct a barrow of earth on a headland on the coast after my pyre has cooled. There, his barrow will serve as a reminder to his people and a landmark to aid them when they sail. Even after, be even after death, Beowulf will be aiding his people in some way. Finally, Beowulf gives Wiglaf his collar of gold, his armor, and his crown. He says to Wiglaf, You are the last of us, the only one left of the Wagmundings. Fate swept us away, sent my whole brave highborn clan to their final doom. Now I must follow them. And so ends Beowulf, the best of kings. This mention of the last member of a tribe connects Beowulf and Wiglaf to the warrior who hid the gold under the mountain. He also was the last member of his race, doomed to wander the earth friendless until death's flood brimmed up in his heart. Line 2269. This detail once again amplifies the theme of the inevitability of loss that has pervaded the entire poem and has now culminated in the death of its hero.